Hello this wonderful glorious morning. Hope everything is going great and that, uh, your day is getting off to a good start and a good way to start it is by spending a little time uh, with the Word of God. So grab your Bible and turn with me to the 33rd Psalm, to the 33rd Psalm and we'll be looking at that uh, the rest of the week and probably some into the first of next week fairly lengthy psalm, uh, about 20, uh, 23 verses, I believe, 22 verses, uh, so I don't think we'll finish it up by the end of the week. Uh, I like to, I like to, as I said before, I like to, to end on, on Saturday at the end of the psalm, so we're not hanging over the weekend. Um, it's worse than those shows uh, continued next week. And so let's jump in here into the 33rd psalm. The 33rd psalm is... Uh, um, it, it's a, um, I don't know if the word's unique or not, but, um, the interesting thing about this psalm is that, um, it is, uh, obviously connected to, uh, the 32nd psalm. Uh, you will, uh, notice as we go into this psalm, uh, that, um, it, um, the, the theme is, uh, very similar uh, to what was uh, what was being discussed in the 33rd Psalm. Uh, in fact, many commentaries will uh, will treat it that way. They they will just uh, run them together uh, as uh, one psalm. Uh, this particular psalm uh, is one that um, we we again one. Um, it seems like we either know a good bit about the, the situation or nothing, and this is one where we know. Uh, really nothing. Uh, we don't know who wrote the psalm. Uh, again, it, it seems to connect to 32, uh, so perhaps David, but um, it could be, um, we, we don't know, uh, it could be that someone who uh, had uh, seen the 32nd psalm uh, decided to, uh, to, to add on to it and write more. Um, and uh, kind of like our, uh, our our modern uh, songs, our, our hymn book. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the hymns. If you get to looking around, um, if you look in the hymnal, you may see three or four verses. But if you get to digging online, uh, many times you'll find out there's been 10, 15, 20 more verses uh, written to uh, to that same song. Uh, and so it's possible that somebody read, uh, they sang the 32nd Psalm and decided uh, it needed another verse. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't, no one does. Uh, we don't know who wrote it. Uh, we don't know the, the circumstances uh, of the writing, but as we read it, <clears throat> it does appear to be in a time of, uh, of, of national crisis. Uh, that uh, that there were some issues uh, going on in uh, in the nation, uh, but yet the theme of it is uh, that we should uh, always praise the Lord. That we should continue uh, to praise Him uh, in uh, in our in our circumstances. And so uh, this is uh, again a, a psalm of. Uh, of, of praise. Um, it's a psalm not just of praise, uh, but it is a psalm encouraging us uh, to, uh, to praise the Lord uh, as well. Uh, and so uh, as we uh, look at this psalm, uh, again, uh, that's kind of the, the background of it, uh, as, as vague uh, as um, as it is, uh, but the, the point of the psalm, I think, will be uh, very clear to you. So let's jump in here uh, in verse 1, and uh, it comes out right out of the gate, uh, doesn't mince words, rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise uh, is comely for the upright. Uh, and so I think if you read that and you look back at the 32nd psalm, uh, you see again how it just flows naturally uh, from that 32nd into the 33rd Psalm. Uh, the 32nd Psalm men to be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy. Uh, all ye that are upright in heart, rejoice in the Lord. O ye righteous, for praise is comely uh, for the upright. If you were to take these two Psalms and again remove the Psalm 33 from it um, and just put them together and just kept reading, uh, you would, um, you, you'd, 
you, you wouldn't even notice it, uh, which is unusual because uh, the Psalms, again, are not necessarily organized uh, by theme or by chron uh, chronological order, uh, but these two definitely uh, go together. Uh, and so we have this, uh, again, it's not even listed uh, here as a suggestion. It is basically a direction. Rejoice uh, in the Lord, you righteous. Uh, and so uh, I think we could take that and uh, flip that around and say, if you're righteous, you will rejoice uh, in the Lord. Uh, and so again, uh, we have this kind of uh, commandment uh, to be uh, to be vocal uh, in uh, our uh, praise. The word rejoice that is used there, uh, and ending uh, verse uh, 32 or. or Psalm 32 uh, means to, to sing or to shout. And so there's no question uh, that the psalmist intends uh, for it to be a very vocal um, raising of our voices. And he said it is comely, it is right, it is appropriate uh, for the upright uh, to praise the Lord. Uh, in fact, the word comely uh, that is used there, the Hebrew word means beautiful. Uh, it is beautiful uh, for the righteous to praise uh, the Lord. Uh, and so uh, that's uh, his opening um, shot across our bow, if you will, uh, telling us right up front in no uncertain terms uh, that we are uh, to be praising the Lord. And, and so uh, we, uh, again, I think we can take that statement and uh, and make it basically a commandment. Uh, rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. Uh, and then he tells us why. Uh, because uh, praise of God uh, is a beautiful thing uh, for the upright uh, to do. And so he, uh, it's beautiful. Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, I hope that we've all witnessed that before to see somebody uh, just overwhelmed with uh, praise for the Lord, uh, vocally praising him and lifting up uh, his, uh, his name. Um, when, uh, when, when, we, uh, when we see that uh, done, uh, appropriately uh, in uh, praising the Lord. Verse 2, he says, Praise the Lord with harp, singing to him with a psaltery and an instrument uh, of ten strings. And so um, he, he's saying to him to, to play the instruments. Verse 3, singing to him a new song, play skillfully uh, with a loud noise. Uh, and so you'll notice something here uh, in verse 2. Uh, it says, praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him. Uh, verse 3, sing unto him. Uh, and so, uh, again, the, he tells us something about the, uh, the, the object uh, of our praise. Um, many times uh, in our church services, and I, I might be about to uh, barbecue a sacred cow here, um, you know, we, we sing almost for each other. Um, someone gets up on the, the platform and sings, it's more of a uh, performance uh, than it is worship. Um, you know, I, I, have, um, I have seen people uh, get up, on the, get up in, on the platform and sing um, that, I'm, I'm trying to be nice, that honestly they couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. Um, they, they, they had really no um, no, no talent, no, no. they would get buzzed off of American Idol or whatever. They, they just couldn't sing. But they were singing, as this verse says, unto him. And it was beautiful. Um, on the other hand, I have, and, and, and I assume probably many of you have as well, and uh, again, I, I know I'm treading in dangerous territory here, um, but I have seen people with, with loads of talent um, who just talent-wise sang beautifully. 
Um, they had all the skill and all the talent. I mean, their notes were just, and they held their notes, and they, you know, they did all the things. But it was lacking. Um, it, it was, it, you know, it was as Paul talks about, uh, you know, acts without love. It was a tinkling symbol. Um, it, it, um, you know, th there's, there's a difference in singing unto him and singing. Uh, and so he tells us here, uh, and that should be an encouragement to us, uh, that it's not about how talented you are. Uh, it's not about how uh, skillful you are. Uh, but it's about the, the object of the praise. It's not the praise itself. It is the object uh, of the praise. And that's what the, the author here is emphasizing in these first three verses. Again, rejoice in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing unto him. Sing unto him. Um, and so over and over again, uh, he's emphasizing to us here uh, the sincerity uh, of worship uh, above, I think, the talent or uh, the skill, uh, but that we give our very best and, and we give uh, our heart uh, to the Lord uh, in, in worship. Um, I, I, I acknowledge, and anybody that's ever heard me try, I can't I can't sing a lick um, I have you know I, I, I think I'm practically tone deaf um, but that doesn't mean I can't praise the Lord uh, it doesn't mean you can't praise the Lord uh, we are directed we are commanded to lift up our voice um, and, and and praise him I, I, could, I could name names uh, this morning uh, over the years I, I can think about one person in particular who um, to me, I'm just going to be I'm just going to be honest. This morning. To me, the voice uh, was was a lot like fingernails on a chalkboard. Um, but in looking back, and, and I was much younger and dumber then. In looking back, I know that per now I, I know that person's heart, and I realize how beautiful that was, um, and. That's what the psalmist is reminding us here this morning, that each of us has a responsibility um, to praise him, to, to rejoice in the Lord, to sing unto him, uh, regardless of, of the talent, uh, but that we give our full heart uh, to worshiping and, and adoring him. I hope you'll think about that today. I think it'll help, um, I think it'll help transform you. It's amazing what praise does for the person who is offering uh, up the praise uh, and so today I hope that will uh, help you and you'll spend some time singing unto your Lord. All right have a blessed day and we'll see you back here tomorrow.